<laughs> you guys can all take your seats. Well, thank you for being here. Um, and good on you. Like, New Year's Eve. What'd you do New Year's Eve? Went to church. Started off with church, as you should. And um, giving God your best. I think that's just really important. I want to pray, and then um, we're going to dive into the message this morning. But I want to say thank you for your pastors for having me again. Like, uh, when, whenever we're in Australia, we often go to America Christmas time because our, our Aussie-born bred son joined the U.S. Army and is in the Special Forces pipeline. Figure that one out. He's the only Aussie doing that because he got citizenship. Because of me, you can tell by my accent, I'm not from here originally. But uh, whenever we're here, it's nice to get an invite to come here and to speak at this church, Together Church. I mean, I look forward to this so much. And so I just want to say a big thank you to you, for your pastor staff, and for you guys for having, having me again. It's a joy. It's a privilege. I count it that way, especially the last day and the last hours of 2023. Like, like wow. But uh, this morning, we're going to look forward not back, and we're going to dive into something I believe that's going to really bless you. So let's just pray. And um, I, like, I like the fact that the definition of faith is now faith is. You know, Hebrews 11, 1, now faith is. Not tomorrow, not yesterday, it's right now. And I, I like to be in the present tense because it's the only, it's the only time that you can, you can be and You can't be in the future. It's not here yet. Living in the past, you, you all know that's ridiculous, but the now is the only space that you actually occupy. So if you're in the now, be in the now. Don't be thinking about, oh, I got so much to do before tonight's party <laughs> or uh, yesterday or, or whatever we're going to do for lunch. Get in the now, and you're going to get something amazing, I believe, from the Holy Spirit, who is the teacher. I'm just a vessel. He's the teacher, so he'll teach you something and impart something into you if you're in the now. Now faith is. So, Father, I thank you right now as we pray, we step into your presence in present tense. And I thank you for your anointing right now for every single person here that we would focus on what you want to say to us personally. And, Lord, that you would do that as only you can do do it now, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen and amen. Well, somebody said that time is the usher of eternity. And tonight, time is going to usher us into an arena that we haven't been in before called 2024. And time is, out, is, is something that God constructed. It's really, it's a construct. It's it's not something that, that exists in eternity except that God willed it, God made it, for us to go into an arena with gifts and talents and find purpose and prove who we really are. So for the space of time that you're on the planet, you get to prove who you are, you get to discover the things that God's given you, you get to discover purpose, you get to learn love. And, and God, God has written that, in your future, God has written that into your life, that he pulls you out of eternity, puts you into time, and then when it's all said and done, you leave time and you go back into eternity. They said, uh, Moses said, who should I tell people that, you know, sent me? And God says, I, I am. Tell them I am. That's eternity. God's not bound by time. He steps into the construct that he created, this dimension. Uh, for our purposes, he comes in and then he comes out again. He's in eternity. I, I can't fathom that because we don't know that fourth dimension and fifth and sixth and however many <laughs> dimensions that there are. Uh, it's just beyond our comprehension. But God, God does reveal things to us that uh, takes us out of just this dimension. But right now we're in it. We're about to enter into uh, another year, like I said, that time has ushered us into and I like to be purposeful about it. I've, I've entitled this message, Recalibration, or Time to Recalibrate. Recalibrate, if you've been in the tool industry or something to do with uh, technical things, it just means to reset measurements. It means to look at the accuracy of the equipment that you're using. Now, the equipment that we're using 
is everything that God gave us, our, our mental faculties, our, uh, our, our soul. And we're going to look at three main areas this morning that we, re we really need to recalibrate or reset just to make sure that it's accurate because if you don't reset or you don't recalibrate equipment, it can get really far off before you know it, your way out. You take a compass, for instance, if it loses its magnetism, if it's out just by one degree over a long enough distance, you can be out thousands of kilometers. So it's really important to take time, and I like to take time, especially not at the beginning of the year, but at the end of a year. I like to go into the new year having reset some things in my thinking, reset some things in the areas that we're going to look at this morning. Now, I believe that we're living in unprecedented times, and we all know that, but there are times where there's just so much noise going on. And amidst, um, amongst the noise, and, and I mean, I'm talking about rumors and conspiracy <laughs> theories on top of conspiracy theories, there's theories about theories and theories on top of that and, 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 and all the rumoring and, and confusion that's in the world, that, that noise, if we're not careful, will, will block us from hearing the voice of God. And it's important that we hear the voice of God because that's how faith comes. Faith comes by hearing, Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So if a compass loses its magnetism, for instance, it has to be reset by a magnet. Uh, they used to call it a lodestone. They put that on the compass because it was a stone that held its magnetism. They would, they would glue that onto the compass, and then the compass would be reset or recalibrated, and, and it would get its magnetic north again, and everything would be fine. Something called the Word of God is what will reset us. We need to have God's lodestone. We need to have the Word of God as, as a, a, a recalibration instrument in our lives so that we know where true north is and what's true and what's not true. Because like I said, all the noise that's going on in the world today. I've got a friend that uh, he's not a believer yet. I say yet. I like yet. Yet's a really good word. Are you married? Don't say no. Just say not yet. Got a job? Don't say no. Say, no, oh, not yet. <laughs> yet is a great word for faith. And my friend's not a believer yet, but if he hangs around me long enough, he's going he's gonna to believe. And, and uh, he was sharing with me that he's got really bad tinnitus. Now, I suffer from mild tinnitus, but what it is, they call it ringing in your ears. It's like noise inside your head that you can't get rid of. It's uh, you carry it with you wherever you go. And sometimes that noise, if, if we're not careful, that noise becomes like spiritual tinnitus that we carry with us. All the stuff that's going on gets into us. Somebody said that a boat doesn't sink unless water gets into the boat. There's not been a boat yet that sank unless the water got inside the boat. And, it, and it's important not to let that noise get into your heart. Because your heart is the place where God wants to fill with his word, not noise, but his clarity of, of, of word to give you direction, especially headed into this new year. Recalibration involves resetting and getting the noise out so you can hear from God. Faith will take you and it'll cut through the noise. That's why it's important that, that the just live by faith. Now, we're going to go back about 3,000 years to, to the time of Joshua, where Joshua, they've wandered for 40 years. He's had to pay the price of the unbelief of Moses and some of the other, the uh, 10 spies that gave a bad report when they went in. Two of them gave a good report. Moses was one of them, said, hey, let's go. Come on, we can take it. Let's, let's go in with faith. And they said, no, no, there's giants. We can't do it. So for 40 years, they wandered. And they wandered in a place, a desert, which is known for its quietness. But they found the noise in a quiet place because the noise was in them. They had a spiritual tinnitus that they took into a quiet place, into a, a desert place. And God can't do anything with them, so they're, they're in a holding pattern for 40 years. And I imagine Joshua, he's... He's, he's there, he's a, he's a faithful two-eyed say to Moses, but it's like, come on, Moses, like, do something. 
But Moses got frustrated by the noise. I believe there are people here. You're just frustrated because of everything that's going on, all the noise that you're hearing from people in your lives. And look, I've got relatives and back in the States and different places. And, they're, you know, every time they're, they're arguing about everything, left, left right, all, all the politics and politicians that are confused and everybody's confused. And that noise, if you're not careful, will rob you of the quiet place that you need to hear from God, to hear the voice of God as a starting point for recalibration, where we're headed uh, this morning as we recalibrate for uh, a new year. So I want you to go with me over to Joshua chapter 3. Joshua chapter 3. See, a lot of people, comes midnight tonight, most of us, if we're up, we're going to say something like this, Happy New Year. Well, happy comes from the word hap, H-A-P, and it means luck. In essence, we're saying good luck or good fortune. It's where we get happiness and happy from. I would like to think that 2024 is based on something other than luck. And that's why this, this message this morning at the end of this year on recalibration is really important that we're not just going to base it on luck. I know luck will play a part in all of our lives, and I hope that you have good fortune. I'll say Happy New Year tonight. But I'm not basing my life on luck. I'm basing my life on other things, especially when it comes to faith. So I want to pause and just get to the trajectory right. Time to recalibrate this morning. So in the time of Joshua, they've lost their way. They're complaining. They got tinnitus. They got this condition. And like my friend, the only way he can sleep at night is to put white noise on. Drives his wife crazy. He has to turn up this white noise so he can sleep to drown out all of the other stuff. I don't want to have to turn up white noise. I want to hear the voice of God and get quiet. Amen? So they, they've grown tired. The noise is so loud. In, um, in Romans 10, 17, like I said, it comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. That's faith. And, and in Joshua 3, we're, we're going to go to one and read verse, virtually just 1 to 4. Early in the morning, verse 1, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from Shittim. Now, I didn't write the Bible, but they've been for 40 years in a bad place. I think it's a really good name for it. In fact, you could take that, break it down, two words. One of them is the S word, the other is timidity. And so they're in shit, shit, timidity, shit, tim. I didn't write it. I did not. <laughs> it's God's word. They set out from shit, em. I'd set out from shit, em too. I don't want to be there. <laughs> and they went to the Jordan where they camped before crossing over. Somebody's going to go, you wouldn't believe what he said in church. You can... Never mind. I'm not gonna, my wife cringes when I start. When I get on these tangents, I can't see her. She's out there, though. I can feel her. <laughs> and they're going to cross over. <laughs> and that's really what we're doing today. Yeah. We're crossing over from one time dimension to another. Like I said, time is the usher of eternity. And... They go and they camp out before they cross over. Now, I want you to, I just want to set a little bit of a, uh, like a picture of this, a background. The river was at flood stage. It's overflowing its banks. It's estimated to be 32 kilometers long. That's 20 miles old school, or if you're American, it's new school. Uh, 3.2 kilometers wide, that's two miles. And they estimate it's about 120 feet deep. So this is a miracle. This isn't like, yeah, the, the, it was a, like a little creek and, you know, they just stepped over it. This thing is seriously, it's a, it's a serious river, two miles wide, 120 feet deep. This is not secondary to the miracle when Moses led him out of Egypt and the Red Sea parted. This is like one of those deals. And they, they send 40,000 armed men to cross first with the... Levites and the officers which are going to take this ark. So it says, after three days, the officers went throughout the camp, verse 3, giving orders to the people. When you see, I want you to make a note of that. When 
you see, because we're going to see that the first thing that needs to be recalibrated is our sight. It's how we see. When you see the ark, and the ark is the presence of God, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and the priests who are Levites carrying it, you're to move out from your positions and follow it. Now, man, I would camp on this verse. This is like so loaded up, it's not even funny. But the Ark of the Covenant is the presence of God. It's called the Ark of the Covenant on this side of the Jordan. It switches over to the Ark. It's known as the Ark of the Testimony on the other side. Before you cross over, before you step into the promises of God, you've got a covenant. You've got a covenant with God. You've got promises. It's the presence of the covenant. It's the promises of God that, that you dwell upon and you think about. And the presence of God is what's going to take you over and cross into 2024 so that you actually have a testimony on the other side. But before you've got the testimony, you've passed the test, you've got a covenant. You've got the promises of God, which are yes and amen. But he says here, when you see the Ark of the Covenant. When you see the presence of God, the, the Lord your God, and the priests and Levites, they're carrying it. You move out from your positions and follow it. A lot of us don't want to move out from our positions in 2023. So God can't do anything new in you because you don't want to move out. He can't do anything with you until he does something in you, until you are willing to move out of your position, your strongholds of thinking, uh, things that, uh, of the past that have worked, but they're not going to work when it comes into this new thing. The formula, the, the patented formula, all, all the habits, you know, the, you, we develop habits and our habits have us. There's, they become strongholds. Some of them are good, but they're not God. But they're good, but they're not God. God wants to do something new. So we have to focus our eyes. For them, it was the ark way out there. It's about a kilometer away from where they're standing. He says, you follow it, but don't come close to it. He tells them the distance. But stay back. Watch what God's doing. Move out from your positions and follow it. In other words, follow God. Follow Jesus. Don't follow the noise. Don't follow with the herd. Stampede with the herd. You're just going to go off the cliff. So it's time to recalibrate to leave the wilderness into the promises. Verse 4, and then you will know which way to go. Then you will know which way to go. And I like this. You have never been this way before. Oh, but I think I have. No, you haven't. You have never been this way before. But keep a distance, about 2,000 cubits. Again, that's about a kilometer between you and the ark. Don't go near it. You have never been this way before. There's two things that I believe this can bring out. Number one is that God wants to do something new with you. In 2024, you can walk somewhere different. He's taking you somewhere new that you have never been before, people resist new things because of the old. So we're creatures of habit. People become so obsessed with their past, obsessing about what's happened in the past. I, I get together with, uh, whenever I go home, you know, I meet some of my high school friends and college friends, and here we go. We're going to tell those old stories again. And, you know, when you're telling it, it's way better than it was, actually, than it, what it really was. I think, yeah, that was fun, but, man, the hangover the next day and the trouble that we got into and all the wasted time and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And it's easy to do that as Christians as well. Be obsessed with your past. God's not in your past. He wants to take you into your future. Philippians 3.13, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do Forgetting what is behind. He doesn't say forget the bad things. Forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. Sometimes it's like a strain to get out of it, to break, to break out of that orbit of the past. Sometimes it's a strain. It's like a rocket taking off. It's got to break through 
Earth's gravity to get through that, and it's a strain to get ahead. Isaiah 42, 9, see, <laughs> the former things have taken place. Okay, they, 2023, former things have taken place. They're gone. New things I declare. Before they spring into being, I announce them to you. Are you ready for new opportunities this year? Are you ready for something new? Can God do something new with you for 2024? Are you just a stick in the mud? Are you just like, I'm digging my heels in. I've kind of, I've arrived. Well, I hope not. I'm, I'll be 69 my next birthday. I have not arrived. Every year, my eyes are open wide like a child with everything. And I think, wow. Lord, let it be a white canvas, and let's paint something on it that's never been painted before. I don't want to be where I was. I don't want to exist where I was. I want to break through into something new. Otherwise, you might as well just take me now, back, take me into eternity now. I might as well just go home because God wants to do something new with you in 2024. Get in the now, and let's, let's, let's do something. I like, on the, yeah, you can give the Lord a hand clap. They say at the top of Mount Everest, there's a memorial that reads, he died climbing. Wasn't it said so-and-so died? Well, probably not if he was doing what he wanted to do and loved to do. Better, no better place than to die climbing. You have never been this way before. Second thought on that, really it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a meaning, I believe both of these are true. You have never been this way before. Number one, again, was uh, God wants to do something with you. He wants to take you someplace that you've never been. You have never been this way before. Second thing is God wants to do something new in you. For you to be someone new, your walk has to be different because you'll be someone different than before. Before God does something new with you, he must do something new in you. To do something new, you have to be someone new. So many people, they're more interested where they're going than who they're becoming. I, I, you know, I like where God's taken me, and I like the different results, and there's, you know, there's goals that I've set and all of that. And when I'm thinking about recalibration, I think about let's, let's set some new goals and let's go somewhere where God hasn't taken us before. But the most challenging thing is God make me someone new. Even though I'm born again and everything else, I'm a new creation. But that's not stagnant. You're not a stagnant new creation. You're someone that God wants you, clay that God wants to mold and, and make you into somebody amazing compared to where you were. And I think about God, do something new, not just with me, taking me somewhere. I've never been this way before, but who am I becoming? Because I want to recalibrate that. I want to become even more of a man of faith than what I was before. I want to become even a greater husband than, than what I was before. I want to become a greater father than what I was before. I want to become a greater leader than, than, than the leader I was before. I want you to do something in me so that I can do something and, and help other people. Too many are more interested where they're going than who they're becoming. In 2024, you can be somebody different. You walk can be different. You have never walked this way before. Jesus said it this way in Matthew uh, 9. He says, you, you can't put an unshrunk piece of cloth on an old, uh, on a, uh, on an old garment because when the, when, the, when the patch shrinks, it's going to pull that old garment apart. You can't put new wine that hasn't fermented yet in an old wineskin. You have to be someone new so that God can do something new in you, otherwise it's going to pull and it's going to rip it apart. Progress starts with a decision called consecration. Now have a look in Joshua chapter 3, uh, verse 5. We'll just go on with that. Joshua 3, 5. Joshua told the people, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Consecration. It's a word that we don't hear a lot of, and it's something that I'd like you to consider at the end of this message. 
uh, that we will take some time and think about consecrating ourselves. It, it means to be wholly dedicate yourself to God and to his assignment for your life. It comes from a, a Latin word which is sacred. You are sacred and set apart for God. Something consecrated is dedicated to God and thus it's sacred. Consecration, it's an investment that gives more than what it takes, but it does take time. It's a sowing exercise. It's an investing exercise. A lot of people are, are so interested in the end result that they won't, they won't sow any seed. They eat their seed. The devil's out to get your seed because he knows that that's where the, that's where the harvest is. And, and, and consecration is investing into, letting, let it, taking time out and, 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 and setting yourself apart and letting God do something on the inside of you so that then you can go out and, and, and reap a harvest. But, but sowing that seed, it's like investing. You have to decrease before you increase. A lot of people will never increase because they, they're not going to decrease first. They're, they're not willing to part with the seed that God's given them, called an investment if you want. They're not willing to consecrate, set themselves apart, hear from God, take that time out of busyness because it's like, after all, my time, I could be doing something more productive with my time than praying. I, could, I can do something with my time way more productive than reading the Bible. And Come on. There's, I've got a busy schedule. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I got TikTok going on. I got a fan base. Ooh, I, you know, I, I got I got stuff to got to do. God says, no, take time out. Consecrate yourself. Now this process and the way it works, and I'm going to give you uh, basically three words. That uh, these are just three things happen when you recalibrate and you consecrate. Number one, you see something new. So the first thing that we need to recalibrate and reset and let God make adjustments is our sight. It's what we see. I look around, I see all kinds of things. So many things that distract. I had a, a friend of mine who um, is a prominent real estate person, and he's not a, a believer like we are. He doesn't go to church or whatever, and uh, his name's Pete, and he, he says to me, he goes, what'd you get up to on the weekend? I said, oh, well, you know what I got up to. I'm a pastor. Like, I went to church. <laughs> of course, I went, you know, preacher, and uh, he goes, ah. <laughs> he says, uh, so you talk to your imaginary friend. And I, and I went, yeah, I did. And he was kind of gobstruck, like, what? <laughs> like, you're agreeing with me? And I said, that's exactly who I talked to. Because that's the primary way that God talks to us. God doesn't, it takes two, you know, I'd like to camp on this, but I've got six minutes left, so we won't be camping on this. But uh, the way I'm talking to you right now, if you think about the process your brain comes up with an idea. I'll just say, my brain comes up with an idea. It tells my vocal cords to say something. Sound waves go through the air. They enter your ear canal. They hit your eardrum. They vibrate. And then your brain translates what I'm saying. How slow is that? I want God to speak to me. Like, like we're speaking. It's like too slow, man. Way too slow. Even the internet outclasses that. God can download in one picture, one imagination, in your image machine, get that, your imagination, your imagination. He can download the whole of the universe in, in, in a nanosecond and give you direction and show you where to go, but you have to recalibrate your sight. So many of us, our sight is so far off that we can't see what God wants to show us for 2024. We're talking about recalibration. So we have to, to see something new. So everybody say, see it. I was going to give you three things. This is simple, okay? The number one thing is see it. You have to see it. Now, the way that this works, and I wish, like I said, I've got five minutes to unpack this. It's not going to work, really, but... Uh, <sighs> 
The way you see it is you hear it. The way you hear it is you see it. If you try, and, and you can try this right now. Maybe you're more clever than me. If you try to hear a drop hitting a bucket, you close your eyes right now. I want you to hear a drop of water hitting a bucket without seeing the bucket or the drop. Good luck. Is that the drop hitting the bucket? Okay, there you go. Told you, man. Uh, see, in the Old Testament, the prophets were called seers. Seers. Listen to this, Habakkuk 2, 1 and 2. Listen to this. I will stand at my watch and station myself on the rampart. Ramparts are lookouts. I will look, listen to this, I will look to see what he will say to me. And what answer I'm to give to this complaint. They were complaining about Babylon and everything else. Well, oh God, what are you doing? Why aren't we doing this? So the prophet says, I am going to station myself. I will look to see what he will say. Shouldn't it say, I will listen to hear what he will say? That puzzled me for a long time reading that. I'm going, that doesn't make sense. I will look to see what he will say. How does that work? And then it hit me. The number one territory the devil is after is your imagination. And he's succeeding with the world. He is capturing people's imagination from everything from pornography to uh, all the junk on the internet to uh, an obsession with self. He is capturing the minds of young people and old people. He's after your imagination. Why is he after your image machine, your imagination? Because that's the way you're going to hear from God. And you can't hear from God if you give that territory over to the devil. You have got to recalibrate what you see. Or you're going to be blind walking into 2024 and beyond. I'll look and see what he will say. And what answer I am to give to this complaint? The Lord replied, write down the revelation, make it plain on tablets, listen to this, so that a herald may run with it. A herald is a messenger, somebody that, that takes the message and just pronounces it. You want to have a powerful voice. Listen to Joshua 1, 8. This book of the law, this is right before, uh, you know, chapter 3 and what we're reading about going across. This book of the law shall not depart from what? From your, come on, say it, mouth. But you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe or see. So you'll notice the connection here between mouth and eyes. Observe to see, or meditate day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then God is going to make your way prosperous and good luck and happy new year to you. No, then you will make your way prosperous. It's got nothing to do with luck. Observe means to see, recalibrate your sight. Second thing that you have to recalibrate for 2024, you must recalibrate what you say. Recalibrate your talk, say something new. Everybody say, say it. First thing is, see it. Second thing is, Say it. This book of the law, that's the recap, that's the lodestone, that's the ma magnetic stone that's going to reset the compass. It shall not depart from your mouth, but meditate in it day and night. Whatever you meditate during the day, it's going to follow you into the night, good or bad, that you may observe to do. Until you see yourself doing it, you're not going to do it. Then you're going to make your way prosperous. And you will have good success. Some people got the say it thing down, but they don't see it. Some people have <laughs> the other way around. <laughs> they can see it, but they can't say it. I'm just a quiet person. I just, you know, I just don't get vocal. Well, good luck with that because Christianity is called the great confession. And it's like clapping. You can't clap with one hand. This is two hands. Do you understand that? Say it is one hand. 
or see it rather as one hand and, and say it as the other hand. They have to come together. I can clap when my two, when the two come together, there's power in agreement, but I can't clap with one hand. I can't clap with just see it, and I can't just clap with say it. I gotta have both of them. I have to believe what I'm saying has power. If you believe in your heart, then you've got power coming out of your mouth. You've got both hands have to come together. Not just one without the other. Parrot can say a lot of stuff, blah, 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 blah. Doesn't know what it's saying. Doesn't mean it doesn't have no power at all. But there's power out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaks. And number three, and then we're going to close. Number three, because I'm into negative territory by 20 seconds here. You see something new. First thing was, come on, say it. See it, brother. See it. (laughs) Second thing was say it. Third thing is, seize it. Seize it or walk it out. Step into the promises. Joshua's hanging out to get across that river. He wants to get in there. Oh, but there's giants all over there. There's, there's Jericho with its mighty fortress. There's wall, walls and, and wars and cities to be subdu- subdued. But he's like, let me at this thing. He's already seen it. He's saying it. Now he's going to seize it. He's going to walk into it. You step out. Nothing can kill you. When, when you seize it, the first thing that you need to seize is God, God's promises. When you cling to God, nothing can hurt you. I remember reading, I'm going to stop with this story, but I remember reading in 1932, the U.S. Navy and the Germans were doing this too. They built these big dirigibles, they're, they're big airships. This thing was over 700 feet long. It was about 800 feet long, called the Akron, named after the city of Akron, Ohio. And it, and it floated across from New Jersey down into San Diego. I used to live in San Diego to a place called Kearney Mesa. I know it well. To a naval base. They were having trouble because the, the air started heating up and the, and the blimp was filled with helium. They didn't do hydrogen because that's what happened to the Hindenburg. It blew up and the rest is history. They got helium going on, but as, 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 the, as the, the morning started to turn into afternoon, the, the helium started to expand, and this big dirigible airship started to take off. They are having trouble getting it to come down to the ground, so they, they turned its propellers upwards so that it would force the thing down, and, and then the sailors on the, on, the, on, the, on the ground, they had to grab a hold of these big ropes and try to moor this thing to stop it from floating away. Well, they're having trouble with this thing, getting it on the ground. And they got the nose rope down, and then the back of it flipped up with these sailors grabbing a hold of the rope. You can see it on YouTube, 1932 or 33. And the, and the back of this giant thing arced up like that and all the ballast water flowed out of it which made it even more topsy-turvy and 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 and, and these sailors there was three of them that held on to the ropes the other guys had sense to let go one guy let go from about 15 feet broke his arm the, the other three held on to the rope and they floated up hundreds of, of, of feet into the air to the point where now if you let go you're gonna die and one after another They let go of the rope, two of them. The one guy held on just as long as he possibly could and then he just couldn't hang on to that rope any longer and he fell to his death. And then a few seconds later, the second sailor had to let go. But the third guy, the third guy lasted two hours. They were at 2,000 feet, they sailed out over the ocean. The guys are yelling at him, like, and he's he just he's yelling back up. When are you gonna land this thing? So how did you do it? He took the rope and tied it around himself. The rope carried him. The the, the blimp carried him. And, and as we approach 2024, I wonder if we could consecrate ourselves as we calibrate in these areas, I wonder if we can recalibrate by by consecrating ourselves to the point where, God, you wrap yourself around me. I want you to carry me. I want the Ark of the Covenant to take me. I I want to do what you're going to do. I want to see what you're doing, God. I don't want to blindly go in and say, Happy New Year, luck, and all the rest. I want to go in with purpose, knowing that God's arms are wrapped around me. I cannot fail. You cannot fail when you cling to God.
I want to pray for you. We're out of time, but, I, but I, I'm excited about where you're headed. And I hope that you are too. This is going to be a great year, but it's not because of luck. This is God, where God wants to take you in 2024 is going to be awesome. Where God wants to take you in 2024, he wants to take you, a different you, somebody that he can speak to, somebody that's following him with all their heart, the promises of God, the yes and the amen, to do something new this year coming. So as we close out 2023, let me pray for you. Firstly, I'd like to pray if you don't know Jesus. Look, the biggest decision I, and the best decision that I ever made, and many of you, if I dare say most of you have probably done that, you ask Jesus Christ into your heart. That was the start of a different eternity for you. We're all going to live forever someplace. I want to be with God at the end of it. And I want to be with God all the way through the dimension of time. How about you? So if that's you and you're away from God, you want to come home, or you've never asked God into your heart, I'd love to lead you in a prayer, simple prayer. And then we're going to have a prayer of consecration. So say this after me and mean it in your heart. Say, Dear God, I repent of doing life my way. I turn from my way to your way, from self to you. And I thank you. Jesus, I give you my heart. Amen. Now, if that's you, Give, give uh, whoever made that prayer, give them a hand clap. Come on. It's exciting. If you prayed that prayer, um, our team has Bibles that they want to give you free of charge, I believe, out in the foyer. And come and see this incredibly handsome man with the big biceps over here. He will, he will direct you. Get even with you. Everybody else, come on, let's stand together. Let's stand. And... Uh, wouldn't it be wonderful if we consecrated ourselves right now? Wouldn't that be wonderful? Wouldn't it be wonderful right now if we could just make a decision that God's going to take me somewhere different because I'm going to be someone different? Wouldn't it be wonderful if right now we made a decision to see something new and say something new? and then sees something new in 2024. We're still in 2023, we've got a few hours left. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we said more than Happy New Year? If we just went after this thing with tenacity and with purpose, wouldn't it be wonderful what God could do? Imagine the things that God, imagine the things that God could do with you if he could just get in you. Wouldn't it be wonderful? So I want us to pray this out loud, and I want you to say it. This is confession time. I want you to say it so that you can hear it, the people in this room can hear it, and so the devil can hear it, although he's long gone. I, I, want, you to, I want you to say it so that you mean it, and mean what you say, and say what you mean. Say this with me. Say, Dear God, come on, is that the best you can do? Say it with some conviction. Come on. Dear God, here I am. Make me. I have never walked this way before. I will do something new as you make me someone new. In Jesus' name, come on and somebody say amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor.